Things get wild and weird at Macon. We had a last lap pass for the win with High Limit. A Central PA Sprint Car team is out of driver yet again. And we'll talk Tony Stewart in the future for his dirt racing interests. Let's go. It's Wednesday, May 29th. I'm Justin Fadler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily presented by Kubota Genuine Parts. Making Speedway last night, a flow racing night in America, late model season opener. Uh, it's been a while since we had a dumpster fire like that in a major touring late model race. I don't know if it was a full moon or what, but that thing turned into a demo derby and right from the start. There was almost immediately an incident at the green flag and it foreshadowed the madness that was to come. We were 30 minutes deep into the feature and only, uh, had only just one lap completed. One of those early incidents included one where Brandon Shepard ended up on his lid on top of Garrett Albertson's car, and Brian Shirley was also in there on his side. Uh, the tight confines of Macon plus a track service with plenty of character and just no give and take on the racetrack led to a messy feature. Pretty wild images there too with Shirley and Alber uh, Albertson out of their cars helping trying to get Shepard out of his car hanging there upside down. Uh, and just to further illustrate how weird of a night it was, under one yellow with Carson Ferguson spun in turn three, waiting to get a clear spot to get going again, Tim McCready just piled into his stopped car. T-Mac maybe not paying attention or looking elsewhere at that moment. It was all just very strange. Out front, Bobby Pierce had dominated from the front row, but his race went sideways late when he biked up in turn three, trying to lap Tyler Erb. Pierce uh, spent some time, some track space, trying to collect a 32, and that allowed uh, Ricky Thornton Jr. to close. And into turn one, RTJ licked the stamp and just sent it. The aggressive slider didn't clear Pierce, and the 32 ended up spun around, facing the wrong direction in the aftermath. RTJ went on to the win, while Pierce recovered to finish sixth. Jason Fager, Hudson O'Neill, also on the night's podium. In his victory lane interview, Thornton sounded remorseful. He did say he didn't mean for it to end up like that. He did, though, take the opportunity to call out Garrett Smith for, quote, running out of talent again. On the flip side, Pierce called the move hard racing, but did say he might have some more hard racing deals with RTJ in the future. I think a little hint hint there. Overall, it was a crazy night. Plenty of bent sheet metal, bent feelings. Uh, as I said yesterday, no Lucas or Outlaw shows this weekend, so these teams will be scattered across the country if they want to race this coming weekend. I do expect that some will take it off uh, and get things ready for a big week at Eldora coming up for the Dream. The Flow Series is back next Wednesday at Eldora. That kind of kicks everything off there. In Pennsylvania, Grandview Speedway, we had a wild finish to the Kubota High Limit Sprint Car Show. Four lead changes among three drivers in that feature and a last lap pass for the win. Brent Marks led the most, and he took advantage on the white flag lap when Tyler Courtney went high in 1 and 2 to try and clear lap traffic. The bottom had become pretty dominant late, and Marks drove by the 7BC and on to the win. I didn't hear anyone mention rubber being down, but it certainly had that feeling late. That bottom was pretty fast, and even though some guys were still trying to keep that top rolling. It was Mark's second high limit win uh, in six races, and even with some tough nights at Kokomo and Outlaw in between, these guys have shown a lot of speed as of late. They also led laps at Utica Rome, don't forget as well. It was Mark's first career win at Grandview Speedway of any kind, which is almost hard to believe with as much as those guys have done in Pennsylvania in recent seasons. Sunshine ended up second with Rico Abreu again on the podium. Brad Sweet led laps late, but he fell back to fourth at the end after making a rare mistake coming to five laps to go. He got, cr uh, got crossed up on the cushion in turns three and four. Uh, with Courtney finishing in front of Sweet, the gap in the championship did grow a little with Sunshine now eight points ahead. The Klaus Marshall team also leading the midweek championship over Sweet. That gap is 39 points. The High Limit teams have two days now to get back to Indiana with Lawrenceburg coming up on Friday, then a Saturday trip to Butler Motor Speedway in Michigan. One driver who was not in attendance at Grandview last night, who was originally slated to be there, was Callum Williamson. The Australian driver had come to the U.S. this summer to race with John Trone in the 39 team, but that deal has gone south after just 12 races and a little more than four weeks together. Williamson ended up 13th in the C-Man at Port Royal during the Weikert over the weekend, and things ended apparently after that. Williamson's racing Facebook page posted late last night that the two sides had mutually parted ways and that they wished the team the best. No inside info here, just a guess, but this feels like Williamson walking away. In the 12 races together, just a single top 10, a sixth at Sealands Grove back on April 21st. Every other race saw Williamson finish 15th or worse, which included several missed features. I do think Williamson is a talented driver, and I know that Central PA is a tough area to race in, but I expected him to at least show signs of progress, and that just didn't happen. 
Since he's here for the summer and appears to have some sponsorship, I do think there is a chance he ends up somewhere else. And we'll see what happens in the coming days and weeks. Their initial plan was to run through the Knoxville Nationals. Uh, no word yet as well on who could replace Williamson in the 39. That continues to be a revolving door for drivers in Pennsylvania. Uh, there is more sprint car racing to come this week as Western PA Speed Week is set to start tonight at Mercer Raceway. Five races in five nights. That includes Mercer, PA Motor Speedway, Lernerville, Sharon, and Tri-City. That happens through Sunday. All at least $3,500 to win and $300 to start with the champion earning an additional $3,000. It looks like there is some weather in the area today, so make sure to keep an eye on the Western PA Speed Week social channels for updates if you are planning on attending any of those races. Before we close out today, I do want to talk about Tony Stewart and the situation right now around his motorsports empire. If you pay any attention to the NASCAR world, you know that Stewart and Gene Haas announced just yesterday that Stewart Haas Racing and its four cup teams and two Xfinity teams will shutter at season's end. The four char uh, charters they own will be sold off along with all of the equipment and the facilities and all of that. Rumors about the team's future have been persistent since last year and charters being for sale and what, you know, would it be a couple? Would it be all of it? And it's all finally come to light officially now. I'm not really here to talk about Stuart Haas though, but instead what the future holds for Tony Stewart's interest in dirt racing. We know he's deep into the NHRA side right now with TSR Nitro fielding a funny car for Matt Hagen and then a top fuel car for Tony himself at the moment. His wife, Leah Pruitt, had been driving that top fuel car, but she has uh, stepped aside for the season as they start a family. Over the last year or so, we've seen Stewart sell off the All-Star Circuit of Champions to Brad Sweet and Kyle Larson. He's now getting out of the NASCAR side with SHR, and his 20,000-square-foot home in Indiana is back on the market this year for $22.5 million. So I think it's only natural that people will be curious about his plans for dirt racing, and I've had some of you ask those questions to me over the last 24 hours. I've been asked what this means for the TSR Sprint Car team and their involvement with Ford, since the situation with Ford and SHR seems to be a significant reason behind the team's closure. I also was asked what this means, uh, what this all means for the future of Eldora Speedway. And the answer is, I don't really have an answer. I have not heard any rumors, any chatter about the future of Eldora, and would assume that at the moment, Tony will continue his ownership. He's been an important steward of Eldora's place in the sport since taking it over from Earl Baltus. And continue to grow the history there. And, you know, we had million dollar races here each of the last two seasons. I have a hard time seeing that changing. As for TSR, the Ford Sprinkler engine and Donnie Schatz, again, no rumblings this year. There was plenty of chatter last season about Donnie Schatz looking elsewhere. And that that 15 car possibly could be closing or hiring another driver. But Schatz eventually decided to stay. And the 15 team is looking better this season than they have in years. Ford has invested significant resources in developing their 410 engine, and I can't see them suddenly shelving the whole thing on the cusp of it being available for purchase. But even if TSR goes away from Ford, the team could continue. They have some major sponsorship partners, and between that and the money that Donnie wins every year, I'd be surprised if that team wasn't at least close to break even. Shots won nearly $430,000 in 2023, which was a down year, uh, and tack on another probably hundred fifty dollars for the Outlaw Championship payout and their series benefits. Plus, they've got the CarQuest Advanced Sponsorship, Ford Support, and the rest of their marketing partners. I think they're probably pretty close. And you have to remember, finding marketing partners willing to help fund six NASCAR teams is orders of magnitude more difficult than finding sponsorship for a single traveling 410 sprint car. So at this moment, I don't have any information pointing towards the dirt stuff for Tony Stewart changing. I'm not saying it won't happen or that's not possible, but things are status quo right now. I know there are a lot of upset people about the closure of SHR, but lives and priorities change all the time. I'm certainly not blaming Tony for wanting to do something else at this point. It's a tough deal for all of their employees and drivers, but hey, at least they have several months advance warning. That's a lot more than a lot of other NASCAR employees have gotten over the history of the sport. Around the other Dirt Racing podcast this week, Wing Nation has Danny Dietrich and Brandon Spithaller. Dirt Track Confessions has Brittany Palmer. Quick Time has Danny Sams. Dirt Tracks and Rib Racks has Gage Garcia. Caution Free has Colton Flinner, and there are new episodes of The Dirt Reporters from Dirt on Dirt, The Dirt Nerds, Hoagie's Garage, Dune Witch on Dirt, Ohio Dirt, The Hammer Lane, and The Driver's Project. To check out all of these shows and their newest episodes, head over to dirttracker.com slash podcasts. Uh, that's it for the daily show today. Hope you guys have a great Wednesday out there. We will see you all right back here tomorrow.